Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now here in my hands, the Bedrock, Bedrock Axe and Bedrock Camp Axe from Schrade. Now I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm taking a look at a product, whether it's on a website or even in a review, it's kind of hard to see how big it is, maybe how it measures up, and especially when you have multiple options. And that's exactly what we're getting into today with the Bedrock series of axes from Schrade. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a look at these in detail. I mean, when I was looking at these, again, it was sort of hard by description, hard by overall look, and really just for me, a little bit confusing when I was trying to figure out how big these were one versus another. So if you were trying to make that buying decision, how would you know which one you want to go with? So again, today we're going to compare these. We're going to look at them side by side. I'm going to try to give you some measurements, give you a little bit of a discussion to help you with that overall buying experience. But with that said, I have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. Now, before we get too far, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Trade who did provide these for review. And so again, the bedrock. First thing being, these are all pretty much built out, essentially the same pretty much having the same sort of features, same steel, it's just the size and some of the subtleties that are going to be different. As we take a look at these, they're all in the package. We're gonna get them all broken out of the package today for this first look and comparison. And then in the future, we'll do some field use testing, but for today's video, just an overview and general comparison. And so as we get into this, the first thing that had me a little bit confused, to be honest, is the name. In my opinion, naming of a product, naming of a knife or a tool should be conducive with the overall intended use and maybe size, and especially when you're comparing things. And in my opinion, where the largest, and you can see here the largest ax is called the bedrock, and then compared against the middle, which is the bedrock ax, and then compared against the smallest, which is the Bedrock Camp Axe, well, to me, that's a little bit deceiving, and here's why I say that. First off, the Bedrock being the largest. This, in my opinion, is the closest in size to an axe. The others, and just, again, my opinion, these are more like hatchets. So what I think would have been a little bit better is, well, this to me is the Bedrock Axe, and this to me is the Bedrock, and you could call it whatever, Camp Hatchet, or this would be the Camp Hatchet, and this would be the Bedrock. I, I don't really necessarily know, but what I can tell you is what had me confused is the idea that the medium here, well, that's the Bedrock Axe, and in my opinion, again, this is much closer to the size of a hatchet. But that's being a little bit nitpicky, I guess, as I should be. Here are the Schrade Slight, which I covered in a prior review. Going to use that to bust these out of the package. Now, again, Schrade's branding at this point, you can see their most recent logo. In the back here, you end up with the sheath or mask, and then you have a ferro rod. So coming nicely packaged. Again, this is going to be in the Delta series. So if you're not familiar, you can go back to some of my prior videos or do a little bit of research, but you'll know that Schrade has an Alpha series, which is the premium USA made line, the Beta series, which is kind of an in-between. It's either going to be US sourced and foreign sourced materials assembled in the US, and then the Delta series is pretty much all overseas. This particular product line coming in 3CR13 MOV, which is going to be a pretty reasonable steal for this. Now it's on the budget line side. However, that's going to keep this very affordable while still having fairly reasonable performance. 3CR13 MOV. Now that's going to be actually fairly low on the Rockwell scale, typically down around 53 HRC. But what that's going to mean, we might lose a little edge retention. However, this is going to be tough. So in other words, where you have you know, a hard use tool that's gonna to be pounding down through wood, it should give you the overall flexibility that you need in the steel uh, in order to not really 
chip incredibly hard or just chunk out, you will probably have to sharpen this regularly, but as an ax or a hatchet, it shouldn't be a big deal. So again here, this is the bedrock. Coming with a polyester sheath made from 1680 denier weight material. You can see the Schrade branding, pretty straightforward and simple. Little Velcro enclosure opening up to the inside. Has a little bit of a belt loop on the backside. It's very simple, yet should be effective. Rivets across the front, down on the bottom. And actually, it says it's made from enhanced polyethylene sheets. Little warning to be careful while you're sheathing and unsheathing your tool. Yes, for sure. And actually, you'll see much easier sliding this in now from the bottom. So just taking it easy here, finding that that snap is fairly tight and doesn't really want to go back together now that this is in here. Yeah, maybe it does. You just need to kind of rotate this into place. So the sheath or mask uh, already, in my opinion, leaves a little bit to be desired. Will this hold everything in place? Hard to say. I don't know how much I would truly trust this if it was on my belt. So, I mean, that's, again, going to be questionable. You'll hear, oh, there we go. So, I mean, on the bedrock itself so far, that's kind of tight, but it will go. Maybe it'll break in over time. Again, you can see that belt loop there, and you would need to trust that snap to hold this securely into place. Ferro rod with a polymer handle. It's actually feels to be like a little bit rubberized on the grip right there. That's a nice sized ferro rod that's going to be fairly thick in terms of your capability to get on here and do some scraping and a decent length. I hate undersized ferro rods. So this will be about average and should do a pretty nice job. And it slides right in the bottom of the handle, which is cool. And then offers a little bit of a lanyard. Now, I'm not going to necessarily leverage this lanyard while I'm using the tool. Of course, that could pull out, but that does help you get that ferro rod back out if you need to use it. So, cool little feature there. Pretty simple, yet hopefully effective. Now, here, the medium. This is the Bedrock Axe. So, again, you can see pretty similar in the overall design elements. We'll compare these very closely all together in just a minute, but you can see very similar, all the same construction, rubber over molded handle. So not only the polymer shaft, but the rubber over molded handle, fairly comfortable. The ability to grip has some indexing points throughout and a nice little flare giving me good overall indexing points. You'll notice on the first two, it did have the waffling on the back of that pommel. So the ability to strike tent pegs or do some crushing action. So that's nice. Digging into the sheath or mask, unsnapping and again on the inside and fitting this in. That goes on well. That snap went a little bit easier. And again, that ferro rod and slipping that down inside the handle. And here, the Bedrock Camp Axe, which again, fairly similar in some of the overall sort of features, but definitely smaller, thinner overall, thinner handle, much shorter. You can see the backside of this pommel is smooth, a little more simple of a tool. Full tang design all the way down into the rubber over molded handle. And in this particular case, you'll notice that it does have a lanyard hole with the lanyard already tied on and then no ferro rod. So a little bit more of a simple tool in this particular case comes with the exact same mask. And getting this fit up here, let's take a quick look, getting that snap. It did snap, but it was, I don't know, maybe just a little bit sort of mushy. It didn't really have a crisp snap to it. But at this point, we do have all three out of the package 
and ready to go which should allow us to start making some comparisons so here the bedrock you can see the overall length roughly 17 inches maybe a little bit longer call it 17 and a quarter from the bottom of the handle all the way to the top of the mask here the bedrock axe so you can see here 14 14 and a quarter inches in overall length and then the bedrock camp axe here you can see this is coming in roughly at 12 and a half inches so depending on what sort of space you have in a pack or in a vehicle or in your setup or what you're trying to do the overall length might come into play the next thing is going to be well the effective sort of nature of each one of these tools and that's going to weigh in a little bit both on the overall length but the length of the head the size of the head and the weight of that head so again here on the bedrock and just got to be real careful with this this is kind of not ideal in my opinion but just got to continue to work with it the thickness of the head averaging out to roughly around three quarters of an inch and the cutting edge well here you can see a little more than four inches in overall cutting length the overall weight of the tool two pounds 2.4 ounces and again just having a nice overall weight and feel. Now I could potentially get on this with two hands fairly easy. I would suggest that this is going to be a small ax. So uh, I don't know if you're familiar with like the Grands Forest Brook small forest ax. This would be fairly similar in overall size. Generally speaking, has a nice balanced feel to it. I'd be curious to see how the polymer holds up over time and the over molded grip. But again, generally speaking, feels fairly comfortable in the hands, should index pretty well and give me good overall chopping power. As we take a look at the bit here, taking a close look, I'd say that appears to be a flat ground bit. Has a titanium nitride coated finish. There's a couple spots that will clean up just from being in the packaging. Has a hole on top to help you hang the ax, so you can certainly hang it from there, which seems like it should hold pretty well and seems fairly neutral but the only thing i think is funny is well how are you going to hang your axe if it's in the mask and it's not like you have any ability to hang it through the pommel end i would like to see the hole there but then again you end up with the ferro rod through here so there's a funny little couple of things going on here i mean that's a nice idea but in effect you'll probably never ever ever use that i am certainly not going to hang my axes without the mask so that's just a little strange the bedrock axe here so as we compare just side by side with the larger Again, the inability to get this cleanly out of the mask, that snap creates a snagging point. So when you go to take this out, it gets hung up on that snap and you can kind of like rotate this around, but that's right in the way, which means you then need to kind of push that out of the way. And then when you go to draw it, your thumb's in the way if you're not careful. But again here, the bedrock axe. Feature-wise, again, very much the same. Smaller head, smaller handle, shorter overall length with that head averaging out to about 0.64 inches. So again, just as we take a look on the average there, yeah, about 0 0.64, 0 0.65 inches. The cutting edge being roughly three and three quarter inches. Again, flat ground and weighing in at one pound, 7.7 ounces. So significantly smaller tool, smaller in every dimension and much, much lighter. And then the bedrock camp ax. So same problem I am thinking we're going to find here as we unsnap this and going to take this out again, a little bit hung up, but it does come out just a little bit easier. Now here you'll notice that the head is definitely a different shape. Has a little bit of, uh, I guess here, has more of a hollow grind. It's not quite as flat ground. And that translates all the way down to that secondary bevel. 
This is a fairly light tool, all things considered, as we get it on the scale here. One pound, 6.9 ounces. Again, one pound, 6.9 ounces, which is interesting. It's not that much different. And I feel like that's the difference between the polymer shaft, so the handle and the shaft being polymer, versus the steel, which extends all the way down underneath that overmolded grip. So this might be a little more robust. You can see it's fully integrated, one piece metal, one piece of steel all the way through the head, down through the shaft. So this is going to be a very durable and robust tool. Again, with that 3CR13 MOV steel, feels pretty sharp right out of the box. Now, again, having that smooth pommel on the back side, the overall cutting edge here, roughly three and a half inches, just a little bit shorter than on the Bedrock Axe. Now, I think this might be a little more effective where if you lost that lanyard, you would have the ability to hang this, or you could certainly put this in a drawer. You don't end up with those funny holes in the stock where again, you do on the polymer handled versions. In this case, you'll notice the laser engraving on the bedrock axe, and then on the bedrock camp, it's kind of stamped in place or machined in place. Also on the opposite side, you'll notice the Schrade branding, bedrock, again, the bedrock series, that's the case on all of these. And all in all, a nice little selection and options depending on your needs. But of course, for me, performance will prevail. Field use testing will come at a later time on a different video. But today, again, just a side-by-side -side look at these tools. So again, from the Bedrock to the Bedrock Axe, the Bedrock Axe to the Bedrock Camp, no matter what, there is a tool for you depending on what you're trying to do. So if you're going a little bit larger, looking for a one or two hand option, closer to the size of an ax, the ability to index on here, get to work, do some carving and some crafting, some chopping, probably a little bit of splitting to lightening things up, getting down into your kindling and basic camp task, pounding in some pegs, all the way down through that full tang design, heavy duty, robust, should be able to pound on this. I kind of like the fact that this one here having that hollow ground design, this is gonna be a cool little companion tool while you're out on the trails. And so again, more to come with these in the future. To the people that trade, thank you so much for providing these for review. If you guys like what you see here today, do me a favor, take a look in the description box below where you can get more details. There are some links that will definitely help out. So if you like these tools and you're interested in getting one for yourself, using the links below will help out the channel. I greatly appreciate the support. So take a look in the description box below. And if you like this content, do me a favor, take a look at my Outer Limitless 2 channel, which is more on the tactical and firearm side of things. At this point, that channel is growing quickly. I have a ton of videos up there. So if you like what you see here on Outer Limitless, do me a favor and check me out on Outer Limitless 2. So, all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.